we want to determine the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. We determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function, which means the limit of the sequence is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of two natural log n divided by n. Now to help us determine this limit, let's see what's happening to the value of the numerator and denominator separately as n approaches infinity. So looking at just the numerator, two times natural log n is going to get larger and larger as n approaches infinity, and therefore the numerator is approaching infinity. And because the denominator is just n, as n approaches infinity, the denominator also approaches infinity, which means this limit is in an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. But because of this, we can apply L'Hopital's rule to help us determine the limit. L'Hopital's rule tells us that when we have a limit in an indeterminate form, or one of these forms here, the limit as x approaches c of the quotient of the two functions is equal to the limit as x approaches c of the quotient of the derivative of the functions. So applying L'Hopital's rule here, we would have the limit as n approaches infinity of the quotient of the derivatives. Well, the derivative of two natural log n with respect to n is two times the derivative of natural log n with respect to n, which is one over n. In the denominator, we would have the derivative of n with respect to n, which is one. So simplifying, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of just two over n. And now that we have the limit in this form, we can determine the limit. The numerator is always equal to the constant two, and because the denominator is n, the denominator increases without bound. So if we have a fraction where the numerator is a constant and the denominator increases without bound, the fraction gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero, and therefore the limit is equal to zero. So because the limit of the sequence is equal to zero, we can say that a sub n converges to zero. This means as we use the formula a sub n to generate more and more terms in the sequence, the value of the terms will approach zero. To verify this, let's look at the graph of a sub n. So on this graph, n is along the horizontal axis, a sub n is along the vertical axis, and this as we generate more and more terms, the value of the terms is approaching the value of zero. So this graph does verify our limit is correct, and a sub n converges to zero. I hope you found this helpful.